hey what is up guys it's Anup here back with another video as you know it's been a while I was away from the YouTube I was doing some my personal stuff it's been a year so I would like to continue my series which is learn with fun just wanted to share my thoughts and you know the applications which I face as a photographer and a videographer in a daily basis so let's get started in this video I'm going to discuss about the applications and the uses and different type of lenses in photography and videography field going forward I will also discuss about which kind of lens you should use in various fields depending upon the you know, lights venue and the location the all mix scenarios so for the location I will say the outdoors which is nature uh, indoor compact which is like very much compact it's like shooting in the apartment any any house and the third one will be indoors but it's a, in a large scale for example any functional hall where any wedding is going on any other events live events public events which is in the you know in a very large scale is going on but it's in a in-house so what kind of lenses and what kind of settings do you use in those kind of scenarios and what parameters you should take before going or stepping into those kind of field so going forward into this video i would like to discuss about the basic stuff you always be knowing uh, and you might be first the thing is the lens which you're using the light and the timing for those who are not interested in to this kind of topics you can skip to this part so i would like to continue with the light i would say it's the foremost thing in photography without the light photography would be impossible types of lights like hard light soft light so moving on uh, to the you know i'm just not going to the depth of what is light is it's like a nonsense and i would like to continue with you know just the main thing the, uh, the lens uh, when you are in the field you should be knowing what kind of uh, thing you should be remembering so only these are kind of three things you should remember in your mind which is time light and the lenses you are using obviously so second one uh, i would like to continue with the lenses camera lenses control the light lenses usually control the focal length of your image the angle of view which we see and they describe the image based on their visual and the focal length between the subject and obviously your the lens in lenses there is a hole which allows the light to come inside with a controlled motorized blades or you can say shields with which you can control lights coming to the sensor also known as aperture it's control something called depth of field it used to blurring the background and to shape the image the third most important thing is the timing so timing is the thing in photography if you miss the moment then there is no use uh, of the photography because sometimes you should click within the moments the main thing that we need to evidence in a photographic image is a time we need to record an image for a certain amount of time which is in a half of the seconds and which is controlled by the shutter which lays exactly above the sensor aka also known as shutter speed every camera till this date we have have the varying shutter speed obviously you can decrease it and you can increase it decreasing the shutter speed it will allows the lights to go inside the camera which will expose it well lit and if you decrease it to the half of the seconds it will allow the lights to come less and obviously the darker the image and you will get the high isos so it will lead to the noise which i don't recommend and you also know about it so we have various shutter speeds to record a different creative effect but also controlling the amount of light which is coming inside the camp and we use the aperture and the time as in in balance with each other to get the perfectly lit and perfectly timed image moving on to the next one varieties of lenses so there are three kind of category for that first one will be macro wide angle and telephoto Basically these three are the main which we use in our daily basis. So what to choose when you are on different three location which I have mentioned in this video before. So we start with the macro lens. So basically I am not going into depth what is lenses and what are the placements of lenses and all. I am not going in depth. I am just giving you just a small overview of it. What macro is and what kind of you know scenario you will get with macros so basically macros have three types short standard and telephoto so in the macro also we have subdivisions of lens 
uh, so you can get macro in telephoto also but it's not a true macro because it got a magnification of it second will be like standard will basically consist of some primes and all and some wide angles and some are with the short angles so before you buy any macro lens you need to know what exactly macro is there is an example i would like to give you so as you can see this is a lens cap and there is a canon written over it if this is transparent and i see from the other end so you can see the same canon written on the back side but in a flip position if you see the thing if the canon logo is for example a centimeter long if it is kept in a certain distance from my eye or from the sensor you can see the same canon logo with same height and size so the ratio over here you are getting is uh, one is to one like what you are seeing what you are getting on another lens cap for this tokina this is kind of very big 77 thread so if i see here for example this is two uh, for example the canon one uh, is one and this one is two so the tokina is two centimeter if i this is a transparent as well and i can see it so tokina will be written in the same not even a single magnification will be there that is the main thing in the macro lenses if you see a subject of 10 centimeter for example a caterpillar if you're capturing an image that 10 centimeter caterpillar will see exactly in your screen not even a single magnification will be there so guys if you want to know about something about macro photography or what is macro and macro lenses are the true macro lenses as i can say because nowadays you can't even judge uh, which lens is which one but until unless you read specification especially if one is to one is there those lenses are true macro lenses so just an example of this 50 mm lens so as you can see over here it's written one is to one 0.8 so what does that mean one is to one it's like what you are seeing what you are getting no magnification is there and what is 1.8 you will ask it's the aperture so the aperture blade will open up till the max which is 1.8 which this lens offer so uh, you got the point of 1.1 magnification that means real life image will be seeing as same size as on the sensor so there's a new scenario like if you have, if you find a lens which can do another you know, ratio of two is to one, yeah, I'm taking, I'm talking about the reverse. Uh, then the lens makes the subject twice the size of the sensor. So if the ratio is one is to two, the subject is half the size of the sensor. As you can see here, uh, for this one, the lower one hundred mm f two point eight, and which is, as you can see here, is two is to one ultra macro APO lens for Canon EF. Just a small example I'm giving here. As you can see at the right corner, you can see it, is, uh, it can go two is to one. Jumping to the next one, I'm just taking another example for the Sony. As you can see here, it's uh, if I go down and check for the details. Uh, as you can see, it can do only up to one x zoom. And if I scroll up again and I zoom to the picture I can see the last is 1 is to 1 from the down bottom so guys benefit of the macro lenses are first it has a shorter focal distance so some specification of this macro lens see it's all in the name macro macro means a shorter or a small subject or any kind of object you're focusing or you want to focus in for example you can do the macro photography as a portraits also to get you know the richer skin tones any kind of doing a modeling shots so in that field you can get this macro lens it can focus the object or any subject uh, which is kept in front of the camera within inches since other true macro non lenses don't have one is to one magnification the image projected on the sensor is small but it is very negligible next it is a sharper lens if you take the shot which is in totally in great focus if you zoom it inside you can see texture of it so it is recommended for texture photography also so if you're buying one just check these features on your favorable brands again i will repeat uh, with the three kind of things in macro uh, shorter one has a focal length between 35 to 65 mm standard has 90 to 105 mm so there is always a myth uh, for the telephoto ones you know uh, it has a magnification obviously you will get a magnification no you will not get any kind of one is to one uh, macro photography 
zoom lens or you can say uh, telephoto lens so you can get a slightly magnification but it's a total uh, win-win situation for those uh, all the lenses so I would like to give you a small example of this telephoto one uh, this Tamron lens is 100 to 400 mm f 4.5 6.3 di so uh, this is the magnification as you can see here exactly what we are looking for with a minimum object distance 1.5 59 inches and the maximum image magnification of 1 is to 3.6 so minimum it can give you 3.6 of aperture with 1 is to 3 of magnification so as you can see here with the tamron uh, for the 70 to 180 mm this is also a telephoto lens which is offering a minimum of 2.8 focal length the magnification details here for the technical information you can see uh, the maximum magnification ratio over here is f 1.4.6 uh, with the autofocus system it can do till 4.6 and uh, with the manual one it can give you 1.2 which is you can get the minimum of it but it will in the widest part of the lens which is 70 mm which is offering and uh, with the maximum part for the telephoto which is uh, 180 mm you will find 4.6 aperture so to sum up the macro lens the focus on the subject which are closer to the sensor in macro zoom lens it will magnify the subject so technically it is not a true macro but you will get the word macro so the subject taken in great sharpness and quality are known as macro lenses so that's all guys for the macro department so more to coming so just stick around i know it's this video is going to be very lengthy um, but i will try to make it short for you guys so moving on to the wide angle lenses